I've learned over and over again how important it is to create gaps and a little bit of space in my life in the weeks and the days to allow some creativity to come in, to allow some rejuvenation to happen. And I also know how ridiculously difficult it is when life fills in all the nooks and crannies and our to-do list and the busyness. So today I am out here to find a little bit of that space and take you along with me. I hope you enjoy this one. We are in Stew Bend, Maine today on Pigeon Hill Bay. On one side of the bay, somewhat behind me here, is Petite Manan National Wildlife Refuge. At the, the head of the bay is Petite Manan Light on an offshore island a, a few miles offshore. And then on the other side of the bay, the east side of the bay, is Bois Boubert. But one of the easiest ways to identify yourself as a person from away, which is the word Mainers use if you weren't born in Maine, is to call Bois Boubert, Bois Boubert. Uh, the locals call it Bear. Pigeon Hill Bay is one of those long deep bays on this part of the coast and I chose it because once I can get to the end of the bay at the southern point of Bear, I'll have a really beautiful open exposure to the ocean, 180 degree view and just park myself there and take that in. The south side of the island does have some ledges that create some breakers. And we've got, I think, two to three foot seas today, which we'll start to see here once we get a little bit further out. I love this lighthouse that sits at the mouth of this bay. It's, I don't know, a mile and a half or two offshore. And it's very tall. It's a really tall lighthouse. And I just love how defiantly it stands out there against the, uh, against the horizon. There's a pretty significant bar that connects Petit Manan Light and Petit Manan Point that should be something that you consider really carefully if you're planning a trip out this way. But the light itself is gorgeous. It's a summer nesting ground or early, late spring, early summer nesting ground for puffins. In fact, I think I've seen a couple of motorboats heading out guessing there was were puffin cruises going to check out the puffins on the island. Coming up on Little Bow Bear Island, or Little Bois Bou Bear, as it'll say on your chart. And it's not really an island anymore, except maybe at the very highest of tides or in the storm, there's a, there's a pretty significant bar now that connects the two. On the other side of Little Bow Bear is a somewhat protected harbor. It is open to the open ocean, so on certain swells there are some breakers and it is low tide, so I might not be able to get in it right now. So I'm just gonna, gonna get out here and peek over the edge and see what that looks like before I commit myself to it. Low tidy. It's very low tide. on a coaching trip once where the goal was to learn how to navigate out to something like Titman and Light with an open crossing and potentially challenging waters. And we got here and the fog was just, it was intense and there was no reason to risk a 
pretty tricky crossing across a large expanse of water to a relatively small island. So we pivoted the class and it did turn into a fog navigation class and some other skill buildings, skill building things that we could do in the area, but we went around Beau Bear. And as we're coming around the south side of Beau Bear, where those ledges are, we could hear them, but the fog was so thick that you couldn't see them. It was really nerve wracking to know that there were breakers happening really all around you and learning how to pick your way through and approach carefully and navigate through that experience. But it's not too bad right now. Cool, let's see what we can do. Been watching these breakers and just making sure I don't see anything I hate. You can definitely see them popping off of this point a little bit ahead of me. But everything else looks open. There's open water around it. It's definitely a consideration as a solo paddler in these types of conditions. I, I really, it's not worth putting myself in a position where I regret being there. There's too much else to see and too much else to explore. So I'm just gonna keep my eyes on this next little stretch here around the mouth of this tiny little harbor. Kind of both sides are protected. And the other area that I'm gonna have my eyeballs on are the, what would that be, the southeast tip. There's a couple of ledges that come off the southeast tip that I'm just gonna keep my eyes on as well. But I think coming at low tide has helped because most of the ledges are exposed at this point and the swell is pretty, pretty minimal. So what at high tide or mid tide would be more white water right now is not. Yeah, I'm gonna put in a shift here and get around this point. Get around this ledge. Woo! Starting to look now at the entrance to this little harbor and how I feel about going in. I definitely don't want to get in somewhere where I regret going in and then have to figure out a safe way to get out. I used to live in Denver and once or twice a year I would find a day in my calendar that was relatively open and take a personal day. And I would go to my favorite coffee shop in the morning and have a leisurely morning and then park my car somewhere in town and just walk around and, and let my interest dictate what was gonna happen that day. And I might end up at a baseball game or a park that I'd never been to or an art museum and just let that unfold, let that day unfold. And by not having a structure and no plan, I just, I, I, had, I had more open to me, it felt like. And they felt like creative days, they were fun days, they were refreshing days. My wife called them husband days. She's like, oh, you took a husband day. <laughs> and I think that's a little bit what paddling is for me, whether I'm with a group or, or on my own. There, there are days where I can create a gap, right? Like things are so tight that no light can get in. And we need to make these times that we open the door a little bit. We create a little bit of a crack away from our to-do list or away from our chores or away from our work tasks to just have a different experience. So that's what we're doing today. We're trying to create that space. We're trying to have that different experience. It's maybe a little bit what I'm trying to do on this channel for you too. Give you that experience, give you a little something that feels like it's an opening for you or, or something new. There's a deer on the shore staring at me. He just heard me. I'm gonna try to be pretty quiet here. See if he'll take off pretty soon or not. No. It's fine, just munching away. I 
did not make it easy for myself coming in here. There are a few spots that I had half a paddle blade's worth of water to paddle in before I was scraping rocks. Not something I'm really excited to do with my paddle. For whatever reason, I have a little bit more of a tolerance for rocks on my boat than I do my paddle. I can fix my boat. I don't know how easily I can fix a paddle. I notice that when I edge, you're, you get really <laughs> twisted. Sorry. Seems like that's a bit of the ledge point there. And get out a little further. Yeah, I can kind of see where they're stacking up on a ledge, so. Another 50 yards or so out into the wind before I make my turn. It's a big wave. Just really paying attention out here. I'm really making sure that I'm continuing to watch. I'm continuing to look for things that are gonna happen that I don't wanna be anywhere near. Got that pocket beach behind me. I'm kind of between the two, two areas, uh, the mouths of this last southeast cove on Bow Bear that can get a little spicy. That point that I just crossed was pretty noisy. There was a lot going on there. I was definitely focusing. And now it seems like the wind's died down a little bit and the wave action has definitely died down. And I'm just parking myself here in front of the open ocean and just kind of taking it in, you know, 180 degree view of the vastness. And I think that can bring up a lot of things for people. It can bring up a little fear that's staring into the void, the existential threat of the edge of something. But it's also why I think we climb mountains or we go to vistas or we, we want to look out onto something, right? Something bigger than us, something Something that expands our perspective. When I would experience this openness as a new paddler, or like off of that point where it got really wavy and bouncy, it can bring up some fear. Intention. Intention's the last thing we want in a kayak. It might be fine when you're on a, actually it's not fine when you're on a lake. You might not notice it when you're on a lake or calm water. But when you start to get to bigger things, that tension works against you. That tension fights what the boat naturally wants to do. And so when things do get bigger, when you do feel some tension, whether it's from parking yourself in front of the open side of something or something gets a little, a little spicy or a little noisy, just relax. What can you do to relax? You know, when I am paddling, my knees are barely making contact with my kayak. You know, your feet are engaged on foot pegs or a bulkhead. I have a, a, a V in my legs, so my legs are, are a little bit uh, compressed, scrunched. And my knees are, are pushed out into the kayak, but they're not like jammed in, right? I'm not gripping the boat with my knee. When you do that, your boat gets even twitchier. It's just a really good practice to try to relax. Even in that spicy stuff, my, my knees were such that I could probably have fit my hand between my, my leg and my kayak. Check it out when you're out on the water. Can you relax your knees a little bit? Can you not have tension in your, in your, your legs and your boat? Does your boat quiet down for you? Does it get less twitchy? Cool. Let's continue. Well, team, we are rounding the southeast tip and about to turn north Heading back up the east side of Bois Boubert, or Bobear. I think this is the more interesting side of the island. The other side's pretty, you know, sloping hill that comes into the, the water. The, the ledge isn't too big, the cliffs aren't too substantial. You're sort of in the bay, so you see some homes across the bay. 
you do have the lighthouse in front of you, so that's gorgeous. But this side gets a little rockier, a little more interesting coastline to check out. On this side of Beauvert, there are a collection of really cool islands. One that continues to go in and out as my favorite, Jordan's Delight. It's a little bit off to my, to my right here. There's a really cool sea arch that at the exact right time of the tide you could get through on the exact right type of day. But it's just a really beautiful island. It's aptly named uh, Jordan's Delight. Also in this area, a little deeper, are the Douglas Islands. And there's just a chain of rock-bound main cliffs with, you know, spruce on top. And they're all pretty close and, again, just really beautiful to to bimble around and check out. We're not going to hit those today. That's not on our itinerary coming to this side, so we'll save that for another time. It's a pretty suspect cove and not worth going in to change a battery for, so go in handheld and uh, we'll see what happens. I know there's a spot up ahead, so I'm also not, there's no need to risk anything. Welcome to Seal Cove on Beau Bear or Bois Beau Bear Island. Wasn't sure what the low tide landing was going to be like, but there's definitely a spot that you can get up and get in at any time of the tide, so that's kind of nice. See my boat behind me here. It's not too bad getting up. All right, let's go explore. Fear you're fogging up. Gorgeous spot here from the top of the cove. Way in the distance there, Jordan's Delight. And then we come around to the Douglas Islands. Came across this, which I can't quite explain. It is a pile of crabs on the beach that don't appear to be too broken open. They don't really have an explanation for why there is that pile of crabs on the beach. Probably aliens, if we're honest. Going aliens. It's the only explanation that makes sense. Yeah, here we go. This is the campsite. This looks great. Don't stuff it. No steps. <laughs> there appears to be uh, a front door. Anybody lose a front door? <laughs> and a fuzzy caterpillar on the front door. Hey, buddy. Apparently if you lost a front door, or I guess if you need a front door and you're in the Steuben Millbridge area, there is um, there's a totally beat up one in the campsite in uh, Seal Cove on Beau Bear. Wild Maine blueberries, very early in the season, but a couple of months, they'll be yummy. Last weekend I did a three-day trip with a group of paddlers that were going to be doing something much bigger later in the summer on the west side of Vancouver Island and I hadn't paddled with two of the individuals so it's just an opportunity for us to all paddle and get to know each other before we're um, in, in BC on this, this larger trip. And my friend Dan seemed to find every single tick on the island. I don't understand <laughs> where he went. Uh, or, you know, what his aftershave was, but it was definitely like tick pheromones. He, if someone had a tick, it was him. Um, I personally hate ticks. I can deal with a lot of things, a lot of things, but there's something about ticks that make me a little, a little crazy. They, they, uh, they mess with my head in a way that very few bugs do. Being in that grass back there reminded me 
of uh, Tick Central. Luckily I have a full dry suit on and I'll submerge my legs if there are any, uh, any hanging on. But yeah, hang in there, Dan. Stay away from, or I guess, don't stay away from Dan. Just keep Dan in front of you when you're camping and he'll collect all the ticks for you. Okay. Well, let's continue the journey. We are heading out of Seal Cove and making our way to the north side of Bois Boubert. We're about halfway along the east side and another 20 minutes or so we'll hit the north side before turning and making the, the last little bit up to the Pigeon Hill launch. Drawn to this lovely dark and deep cut between the rocks that has a pebble beach going up into it. It looks dark and mysterious back there. If you find it high tide, I imagine you can get a little further back in there. Yeah, at high tide, it's probably just, just, just kissing the inside of that, that cave back there. Cavern, cave might be, might be a gift of a word. Well, the fun run along the east side with the wind at our back and the tide going with us turned into a really nice protected stretch along the north side of Bois Boubert. And now we're turning back into the wind and back into the incoming tide as we make our last little stretch to the, the, the landing here in Pigeon Hill Bay. I've never done this stretch and not had a stiff headwind the shape of the bay, I guess, weather conditions, prevailing winds, and today is going to be no different. I would love to hear your comments on the stillness in the space. Do you have your own version of husband or wife days? Do you have your own way that you try to inject a different type of energy by creating gaps or creating space in your daily routine or your normal routine? What are, what are those for you? What do you, what do, you do? Also, what's your experience with the vastness that we talked about, the ocean? Do you get a little nervous there and do you tighten up in your boat? I'm particularly interested to know if you do feel like you paddle really engaged and locked into your boat and all your points of contact really, really engaged. Try relaxing and let me know what that does. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? What's your experience on that? Or if you're someone who considers yourself a relaxed paddler, tell me about that too. All right, I'm, I'm gonna put a shift in to get to this headwind. So we're gonna wrap this one up here, friends. I really appreciate you watching. Like and comment and subscribe. YouTube likes all of that and it helps me out. So uh, if you haven't already, I appreciate you taking a moment to do that. Thanks for being along on this adventure and I hope you have a great time out on the water. All right, everybody, until next time, safe paddling. Bye-bye.